Welcome back to Swan Dive, a Spire campaign by the Savage Godlings. Last we met, old friends, Titus yearns through eternity's spiral garden mobile of glass peculiarities came crashing down, courtesy of bombs planted by none other than the Crimson Vigil, the extremist sister organization to the ministry dedicated to Lekale, down now as facet of revenge and fury. Among the rubble lies Titus's broken corpse, the ruins of his wife's magnificent magical porth engines, and a gaggle of confused ex-partygoers wondering what comes next. But before the carnage swallowed the evening, Sonnet discovered the truth behind Deacon Sunrise and his extraterrestrial origins among the moon elves of the Aether beyond the Dome of the Sky. Willow and Orin and Gertrisa dealt with a heart-blooded beast in gory fashion, and Griff found himself a false factotum holding the truth of the night's last entertainment. Now, standing among the rubble of what was once a soiree of epic proportion, everyone wonders who's to blame. The dust begins to clear. It is nothing but destruction. Cragged, ripped ground like an earthquake has shattered the earth in a way unimaginable. Fractured along a plane wasn't even remotely designed to fall in this way. The, the orb ripped and rent into a, a hundred smaller hills, all filled with the remnants of the once beautiful forest of Mogwin Porth. Uh, however, it's even more horrific, because it's lit by a towering plume of purple flame erupting from the center mountain of Mogwin Porth. Inside that towering inferno, we find the remnants of Elsbeth's engine. Our friends luckily have survived. Most of the interior of the mountain has remained, but... The engine itself and the massive glass case that wrapped around it have shattered, and now horrific, blasting energies rip forth from the machinery that its unbelievable girth consists of. Uh, all of you are knocked unconscious from the, the force of this um, this sort of experience, this collapse. And Sonette, you feel your, feel yourself uh, you feel yourself being uh, shaken alive, and as <sighs> as your eyes creak open. None other than Paladin Major Reason. Oh. Sonnet. 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 What are uh, you want? Uh, no. Uh, little bruised. Uh, oh, Reason. What happened? Bubble fell. Stand quickly the machine at the center it burns. H how could such a thing happen? I have no idea. I believe we'll discover it quickly. Come, come. You see, Elsbeth is also uh, stood up. Honestly, it doesn't look too particularly harmed, um, and uh, is, is checking on the attendants that, that were serving previously. Um, all of them also seem roughly unharmed. Um, and then, yeah, Oren, Gertrisa, uh, I feel like, yeah, you guys begin to groggily, you know, come to life around, around the same general point uh, as everybody begins to make their way out of this, this engine room. Uh, yeah, first thing I do is uh, check on, check on Belvin. Um, yeah, he seems fine. I think he was awake before you. Probably like you know, laughing at your face. Oh, good boy. Do I need to take uh, stress because I was bleeding as of the end of last session? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Give me another D six blood stress, please. Okay. Oh my. So, what does that put you at? Eleven. Okay, so at eleven, um, just a... all right. Luckily, it's just a minor. Uh, you already have a a medium. Or is it you have a you have a minor fallout? All right. I think it was. I'm pretty sure it was a medium, or maybe that was Bob that took a medium. Did you write it down anywhere by chance? I think it was medium because you the way you described it was that I basically just got like shish kebobbed open. Yeah, you got almost impaled. Yeah. Um, we're just gonna say the minor is blood loss. Um, any evade 
uh, actions are going to be uh, difficulty one. Um, and uh, yeah, I think you you are really struggling to walk. Like you can feel, especially now that you've woken up, you've been awake, it's asleep for a while, and your wound has kind of been allowed to fester. And yeah, I feel like like your cheeks feel cold. You know, your knuckles, any any extremities, you can. You're feeling. I, you, you're a veteran. I think um, you know. You can feel. You're a little too cold. Uh yeah. Um yeah. Then if I mean if, as soon as I get to the person that's nearest me, um I don't know who that would be. I feel like it's Catrice. Okay. Uh then yeah, I'll just kind of like limp up and just like reach out for Catrice and like Catrice, we gotta move fast. I think I, I think I might be dying. Uh, yeah, first, before I, uh, do anything else, I forget. I, I remember I tossed aside, uh, the sheets. I, I don't know if I brought them with me. You didn't mention grabbing them, but I mean, it is not within, it is not, yeah, outside the realm of possibility that you picked them up, and we just didn't think to mention it. Yeah, uh, well, what, whatever reason, uh, first things first. Wait, this, was this wound, um on an extremity or was it like his torso uh it's in his torso yeah i think it's like right under his left ribs like if it would have gone deeper it would have pierced his intestines probably some some guts in there maybe a lung okay well uh i'm gonna tear apart i'm gonna tear apart some cloth and uh but before i do anything else i'm gonna just try to dress this wound as best i can okay uh would you um okay would you like to give me a fix roll yeah, uh, I don't believe I have a skill in that. I feel like as you're doing this, um, everybody essentially has collected a recent takes some steps over uh, and takes a crouch. Can I assist? Please, uh, apply pressure there, and I, yeah. Okay, cool. And you can add a dice. Fuck yeah. Boom, didn't even need it. No, you did not. Awesome. But thank you, awesome. Rustin. Um, yeah, he holds he holds him down and, and quiet, my son. I know this will hurt, and uh, I think he takes out like an you know like an Elfier equivalent to like a wallet, just some like elegant leather engraved bifold, and gives it to to Oren to bite. Yeah, and uh, yeah, we they do some some wound binding. You can get rid of that miner, no problem. Good deal. Uh, and yeah, I after that I just help him get up onto Belvin, and yeah, I think he probably just slumps over and like thank you, Major Recent. Everybody, quickly, out! Before anything else comes to a head. And yeah, you see, like, at the top of half of, of the room, kind of, you know, this, this cavernous chamber, um, it's engulfed in plumes of fire uh, as you know, the machine begins to, yeah, crumple and burn. Uh, Elspeth is, yeah, kind of staring at it in horror, silent, wide-eyed, and uh, it follows you guys behind. Uh all right, I, I think it doesn't, you know, as, as you make your way out, you can see these apocalyptic shards of the dome resting amongst the fragments of what once was the field, now lit again by the light outside in Amaranth. Um, but very dimly, this mobile was massive, and the primary source of light, of course, is entirely cut off. But the, the light from the outside still manages to give you soft illumination from the outside perimeter, something like a gargantuan football field. And uh, it's all obscured and wisped over with still plumes and dust clouds of what was once the sand and soil that consisted of, of the two domes that have collapsed, um, of course being the Malcolm Porth and the uh, Nujabian front bubble. Uh, the other, the latter, of course, filled with sand uh, and loosely packed dirt that is everywhere. Um, but you can begin to see as you guys make your way, uh, you know, kind of towards the general mass of the center, which I presume you're going towards, um, uh, where because that's where the majority of like handmade lights and lajon lights and you know you can see paladin lights that sort of thing. Yeah, you can you can see that carriages are beginning to enter this area, um, armored carriages. Uh, everybody back uh, in the center. Yeah, you can kind of see from the Mogwin Porth bubble slowly a, a small group of people begin to stumble out uh, in the in the distance. Uh, I think you can kind of see vague forms. And you as well, even closer to you, can see the approach of several armed carriages, probably something like four. Um, and, uh, yeah, they, they clatter along. You see uh, Deacon Sunrise and uh, his his attendants that uh, originally, of course, were paladins that came with Reese and Go and Tint to Titus. You can see the Deacon begins to 
hum some sort of death rites over him and they cover his eyes uh rap and begin to rap and that sort of thing yeah i think patrick lee takes a step over to willow <laughs> are you all right willow I, uh, and I, uh, I still have the panicking condition from last time, mm-hmm. I think. So, yeah, I don't think she is all right at just out of character as a quick side note. Um, I, uh, I, I can't believe Titus is really dead. Death is disturbing to encounter in any circumstance, young Willow, let alone one such as, such as this. So, uh, what do we do... I presume these carriages approaching, or some guards or something, they will speak to us. We'll find reason, and with reason we will determine moving forward, finding justice for Titus. And he kind of looks a little lost, and kind of looks around and wanders over to the, the other paladins, kind of claps one on the shoulder, and then joins in on the rights with Deacon uh, over, over Titus. Um, and yeah, the, the, the carriages by this point begin to stop in the distance, and the you know back snaps open with a galvanic hiss, uh, and out comes black armor-clad guards, all bearing a halberd with a a, a blade edge, probably you know, a foot and a half long. Um, all of them beautifully carved and lacquered, uh, and lo and behold, on their hips in a similar style, are something like sawn-off shotguns um, and a bandolier of shells strapped across the front of the armor. Um, and yeah, they begin to exit uh, these these carriages all together. There's probably like 16 of them. And in the front, a very, very crudely black-masked drow. Uh, a, a woman from the appearance, uh, small, but... From the veininess of her skin, very clearly an undying, and anyone, especially like Willow, um, anybody familiar with sort of city gossip, recognizes this woman immediately. Maji Ebo, the leader of the Black Guard, the secret police and enforcers uh, of Aelfir Law in Amaranth, and anywhere that requires a little more oomph when the paladins are busy. And uh, she whips her head around. Who's in charge of this situation? Kind of silence for a second. Patrick just raises a head. Ah, owner of the garden has unfortunately passed here. I am a retired captain. I suppose I have some authority. The deacon here could perhaps speak. It's fine. Patrick, please. I can handle this. And... Uh, kind of makes a, a symbol over the, the head of Titus. Stands to his full height. So, hey, Bo, I will explain everything. And uh, he, he puts an arm uh, around Ippo, who stands stock still, and yeah, he, he whispers something. All of Ippo's uh, black guard kind of you know, standing very focused and, and looking around, uh, observing the wreckage. Um, by now, I think everybody from the Magwin Porth bubble, you probably arrive. Some of the black guard whip and turn around uh, to see you, and one of them calls out, HALT! Elspeth steps forward. No, no. This is my home. What is... What, what is happening? And the black guards uh, turn, and Ebo turns from Deacon and, and sees Elspeth. You are the owner of this home! Elspeth steps forward. No, my my husband is... Deacon steps forward, uh, kind of pushing Ibo back a little bit. Elspeth, I need to speak with you. Privately, for a moment. Ebo here has had the situation explained partially. I'll get around to the difficult part after we speak. What are you talking about? Come, darling. Archdeacon kind of, uh, or Deacon uh, holds out sort of a, a caped arm, uh, wraps it around her shoulders, and takes her away from the group. Ebo uh, turns around to, to everyone else. Please, everyone, if you need assistance, my guards are here to help. Are there people that have been trapped? Or, and Patrick Lee points over to the Nujabi in front bubble. I'd imagine there are 
perhaps attendants or something of the sort in that one. None of us were there. But most of the hunting party was able to make it out with the uh, forewarning of a uh, few capable individuals. And Patrickles looks around and Griff, does he find you? Um, Are you hiding? I don't... <laughs> Uh, I, I'd prefer it if he didn't, but um, <laughs> I don't know if that adds up to me. No, it totally is. You can not be there if you want. Yeah, I would <laughs> love to. Uh, I think um, uh, my knee jerk as soon as you described the the sort of the, the black guard coming was uh, I got to book it. Um, oh, I mean, it makes perfect sense for me. Yeah, if you yeah. just roughly. I, 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 do, I do have a question, though. Um, Go ahead. Uh, sort of uh, either for clarification or to make an investigation, I suppose. Of when Titus, uh, how did how how did Titus look when he was dead? Like what what were the circumstances? Oh, he plummeted. Yeah, he was crumpled against the ground. Okay, like, all right. Skull surrounded by blood. A classic like push from a skyscraper balcony kind of thing. Fair. Okay. Um, then uh, yeah, I would just like to make myself extremely scarce. Okay, I think that's. I, I'm not even going to make you roll again. There's so much going on. I I think you can you can just do that. Um, nobody's paying attention to a, any individual, you know. Um, so yeah, when Patrick Lee says that, he looks around and uh, capable individual. Uh, Willow, did you see what happened to your little friend? Uh, oh, uh, he was just here a second ago. Oh, oh no, I hope he's okay. Oh no. Uh. You're telling me your informant who who knew about the bomb threat is gone? Well, I so I certainly did not. In- I'll go find him. It's okay. I, I'll be, uh, I'll be back soon. And then you hear in the distance the most heartbreaking wail you can imagine, ripped from Elspeth, as she tries to tear herself away from Deacon, and you can see he's pinning her back, and she's trying to rip herself to Titus's corpse. And uh, a few of the blackguards step. And, and pick up his body and begin to move it to a carriage and you see she breaks away from the deacon for a second um, and, and, and sprints one of the black guard has to stop her himself and yeah she's just calling out his name and and, uh, and screaming as, as the deacon manages to make his way back over and, and continues to, to privately talk to her um, okay uh, what were you saying? Oh, I feel like in this commotion is whenever Willow runs to go look for Griff actually okay um, yeah, you can sprint off. So, uh, yeah, if you want to give me a pursue or okay. investigate, I know okay. those work for me. Still high society? Uh, yeah, just because we're near Well, I don't know. Just because the moment, I, we're not, it's not a particularly high society situation. Yeah, I was just trying to see if there was any, like... Maybe order with all the cops around? I was going to yeah. say desolate with some equivalent. Order, order is honestly a good one. Yeah, just because we're the cops in this. Yeah, I, that's... Yeah, so that's, just, that's just order, not high society? Yeah, I think just order. Okay. Yeah, it just it's, to me, even with all the gilded stuff, everything's so destroyed and, and wrecked around you. I just feel like all the skills and things implied with yeah. high society and domain just doesn't feel quite right. That's okay. That's a three. Oof. Um, I I, okay. I could I could work with you. Like I I. <laughs> I well, could... at the very least, just give me a D four. Um, nah, just give me one reputation stress. Okay. You don't have to roll. Okay. Well, I, uh, I actually have reputation protection, so... Oh, okay, so you just take off one of your repu- reputation yeah. protection. Um, yeah, so, Griff, you can just sort of see Willow flailing desperately looking for you. <laughs> um, uh, Griff! Griff, where'd you go? I'm worried about you. I just Everybody's dropping left and right. There's oh, this man, tragedy no, I, left and right. No, I feel so, bad. They're, they're oh, going to ask on. questions. They're going to think that I'm going to be weird and all shady, too. You're going to implicate me, Griff. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Griff. <laughs> oh, man. Griff. All right. I, 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 I swing down towards her from where wherever I or crawl out from some rubble, wherever, wherever the heck I am. Um, Griff. Griff. Oh, Griff. Hey, hey, uh, what's up? Thank, oh, thank goodness, they were, Patrickles and the others, they were looking for you so they could, I don't know, give you, give you your kudos or something like that. Oh, um, I don't, Griff, I don't is, think kudos is really what they're looking about giving me. Uh, I don't know, I feel like it's, what, did you do something? Did you, I mean, what? I did warn them about a bomb that was about to happen, and then it happened, and they don't know me? Um, well, I imagine I feel... the least they're going to want to do is, like, ask some questions, maybe peek under the mask a little. I mean, you know, maybe they ask some questions and it'll be fine. We'll, 
You know, I'm a smooth talker myself. I can advocate for you. You don't have to run off like that. Look, kid. I think it's best in this circumstance we... You do not hear this, Willow. Oh. What the fuck? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think that's, um... That's, that's probably wise. There's a time to hide. And there's a time to go in guns blazing. Sometimes... Your guns are a little more proverbial, and you feel hitch kind of tighten a little bit. Uh. Yeah, okay, um... Are you okay well, over there, Griff? Uh, you look uh, like you, you're going through something. Y yeah, you no, know, no, it's fine, it's fine. Uh, I'm just, uh, I'm just thinking, um... Oh, why is everybody acting so weird today? I just, oh. I, I guess you're right, yeah, let's, um... Wait, did he, did he, did he say it's time to, I'm sorry, I was... I was too taken aback by the new voice. Did he say? Did he say I should hide or not? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. I was so into it. Uh, you're good. Hitch said, "Yeah, you should just turn yourself in." And this time, this is okay. that was his advice. You don't have to listen to it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I. Uh, you haven't steered me wrong before. Uh, me? Are you no, talking no, to me? No, I'm, I'm sorry. That... I um uh yeah you you, haven't... you haven't steered me wrong before, Willow. You've you've been uh... you've been there. You've been a pretty good friend. Yeah, I uh, yeah I'll 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 come along with you. Uh, I... I'd hate for you to get into trouble because of me. I yeah I'll take that compliment. All right, let's go let's go on back now, Griff. Smooth. God, I, I hate it when you do that. Me? And what did I do this time? No, Griff? no. Um, I, I was, um, uh, you know, talking about b buildings. You know, when they, when they fall, when, when, when buildings, buildings fall. I hate it when they do that. Uh, that's you're really dealing with this situation in a funny way, Griff. Uh, you know, different strokes for different blokes. You know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Just to be clear, this is this is the rope, right? Uh, I, I want to leave it a little mystery on okay. there. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Griff. Griff follows Willow uh, wherever wherever she's going back, and I guess also, um, uh, I think he's also like glancing around, seeing if he sees uh, Mister Gunther's Hound. Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah, he, you can definitely see him in the distance, kind of in this sort of pool of refugees. Again, sort of it's 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 that moment in a movie after sort of a disaster and all the ambulances have rounded up. Um, mm -hmm. And now multiple other carriages, like a medical carriage, has arrived. Um, and, and, you know, one of the carriages of Blackguard went to go along with now, uh, once again, a newly arrived carriage of guards to go to the new job in front uh, bubble and, and double check all that survivors, that, that sort of thing. So, yeah, this growing pool of survivors, um, you can see Mr. Gunderson and Mr. Jarl standing off to the side and whispering. Uh, Mr. Jarl smoking a long ass cigarette and a long ass cigarette holder. All right, yeah, I just wanted to make sure they weren't, like, under a bunch of rubble. Luckily, they have not gotten squashed. Yeah, you're good on that one. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, then I just, I, I trail behind Willow. It seems like she has a, 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 a need of me to be present. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, so I feel like while that's going on, um, you know, the time it takes for you to hunt all that stuff down, uh, Ibo, um, you know, takes a moment to, to talk to Patrickles. Um Orin, you recognize her. Yeah. Um, she hasn't seen you yet, um, you know, I, I, and you, of course, can see that there's medical staff here um, that you could go to, uh, but you're kind of going to have to pass within sideline of her. Yeah, uh, I think once Orin catches, I mean, yeah, when, I guess when she walks up, uh, I think Orin kind of moves behind somebody, like tries to keep himself hidden, but also I think he kind of straightens up and like puffs out a little bit and just tries not to look as though he's injured. I think you're riding on the back of the hyena, right? So I think you oh, can. Oh fuck sort yeah, of, that's right. Can, <laughs> not the most inconspicuous right now, but you know you could definitely sort of hide behind Gertrisa. Well, I mean, if, yeah, I forgot we're still on the hyena. If we're on the hyena, I think he just says fuck it and realizes she's gonna spot him because he's on a giant hyena. Um, and yeah, I think he just kind of slowly like slides off and uh, straightens up and just kind of waits and says if she you know sees if she does anything i, I think it's kind of like, staring yeah i think it eh, not like in such a way that i'm like trying to catch her attention just kind of watching to see i think for for orin right now it's just kind of is she gonna pull some shit in in this mm -hmm. moment of, of tragedy you know uh 
yeah, so you stand there for a moment, and uh, Ipok gets done with Patrocles, pats him on the shoulder. Uh, Reason, uh, I, we'll we'll save that actually for a second. You see, Patrocles uh, leaves over to to talk to Patrick uh, Reason. Uh, I think he's still with Sinet, and um, and, and yeah, and then you see Ebo catches your eye, and she cracks a uh, impish smile. Uh, uh, she has one of those sort of half masks uh, just under the nose. Uh, and, and stands up, brushes off her knees. Well, I'll be damned! Brisbane, is that you? Always a pleasure, hey, boo. You, uh, you alright, Brisbane? You're not looking so hot. Doing just fine, thanks. You seem a, a little pale. Even by, even by my standards. And spending a lot of time inside, what can I say? Hmm... It's not good for you. Oh, you know, although I, I, I guess for you, buddy, you, you may want to stay inside, huh? Don't want to get yourself in too much trouble. You have something to do with this, Brisbane? I think we both know the answer to that question, Abo. You know me. I think I'm the type to bomb spiral gardens. I don't know. Maybe something changed in your M.O. You got ballsy. You decided you'd sneak your way into a party. Blow some shit up. Kill some hapless Aelfir, huh? Bit above my pay grade, don't you think? Maybe you're right. Maybe that is a little above your pay grade, Brisbane. Any idea what happened? Who's your friend here? A little, uh, on the old side, huh, Brisbane? I'd expect you to... Not exactly I'm Gatrisa. It's a, it's a pleasure to meet you, dearie. Oh. Or is this a friend of yours? No. I didn't think so. Yeah, we we actually just found out about this uh, just a few minutes before the bomb actually went off. Well, sounds like you're going to be a lot of help. We'll make sure to pull you for questioning, huh? That sounds lovely. What a joy. Keep your nose out of this, Brisbane. Tell your friend Billis. If I find his ass, I'm throwing him in the hive. Good luck with that. <laughs> she turns on her heel and uh, makes her way back to the rest of her men. Uh, over to Sunette, who is with Reset. Um, did you did you have anything to say on, on sort of the walk over here? Can somebody please tell me what's going on? We were talking one minute and then we were falling. I have no idea. Let's see if we can find someone who understands this better. Perhaps the group that made it to the ground understands. Gosh, it's like a battleground out here. It's been a long time since I've seen carnage like this. Whoever did this will pay dearly. Hasn't been long enough. Let's hurry, talk to somebody. Make sense of it all. And then, yeah, I feel like right about friend then is when Patrocles uh, has separated himself from Ibo. Um You see Ibo approaches Gertrisa and Oren in the distance, and then, yeah, Patrocles approaches. Hail, Reason! Mm. What do you need, Patrocles? Are you all right? You're wounded at all? No, no, I'm fine. Do you have any information on the situation? Yes, it seems it's a bomb threat of some kind. The Crimson Vigil. Well, I suppose it isn't a threat anymore. <laughs> Sorry, too soon. Uh, just, <laughs> just nervous. I'm nervous. Look, God, what I'm trying to say is it soon. Uh, I we all handle grief differently. Look, <laughs> Titus. Titus fell. Yes, and a whole lot of other things seems to have fallen too. What do you mean, bomb? Where? It seems the bomb went off above the uh, primary nexus if my sight didn't fail me. Blew up that central light source of some kind. It seems as if the aftershock made its way through the connective tunnels. And it seems as if they did some damage to a few of the bindings to the ceiling. Especially the Nujabian bubble and the Margaret Porth bubble, as you saw. Perhaps the only ones they could access. Oh, my God. Oh, who would do such a thing? I mean, all all those pe, pe oh oh gods, oh pent, and she starts scrambling off towards the where the main party was. Okay, yeah, okay, absolutely. 
Um, <clears throat> yeah, and you guys can still see her kind of Elizabeth wailing, that sort of thing. Okay, you make it to the, um, the center group. Um, at this point, I think that's Willow. Uh, no, yeah, I think by, we'll say uh, you no other player characters here at this point, I don't think. Um, yeah. I think it's just sort of like the, the, the bunch. Like I said a little while ago, it's, it's sort of that moment in a movie after a disaster has taken place, everybody's being loaded up now into increasingly uh, increasingly present carriages, uh, medical carriages, you know, getting loaded out. Uh, survivors are being brought over from the new job in front bubble. They're being loaded out. Um, and yeah, I think you can see in the distance this little encounter with uh, Oren and Gertrusa wrapping up in a bow, turning around on a heel, uh, coming to command some blackguards. Uh, and then, yeah, I think you can probably now see in the distance Willow and... Um, a griff approaching. Um, so the the main party was in the the Javian front. Main party was in uh, the northern highlands part. Uh, the new and Javian that's still front, hanging up like, there, right? That luckily is still hanging there. Uh, okay, yeah. and that's where all the, the the servants were for the party. Or yes, they, uh, they yeah. would have still been there. You are correct. You have okay, made that's, a connection. That's that's where Sinet was heading. Okay. Uh, you'd have to go back up the, the, the magnet port, or like, the, the, you'd have to go back up the magnet elevator. Uh, currently, those doors are, are closed. It uh, doesn't look like the black guard are particularly interested in letting people pass to, to go back up to the mobile, especially in the structural state that it's in. Um, you know, this whole place is just covered in gargantuan shards of glass the size of, you know, couches, uh, love seats. I mean, you know, furniture is weird. And beyond, like, car-sized fragments of glass. Uh, all the way up to, I'm pretty sure the largest fragments of glass are, like, you know, building sized, gargantuan. I mean, it's not going to stop her from going to that main spire. <laughs> uh, okay, she can go there. She can go there 100%. But again, yeah, those guards are, black guard are not letting people through the doors. So if, if you approach, yeah, there's a guard. He's standing there, halberd in hand. I need to go up there. I'm sorry, ma'am. We're not allowing anybody back inside the bubbles. What about rescue parties? We don't know how long that thing's going to stand up there. We've already sent some black guards inside to see anybody inside the rest of the standing bubbles. I'm afraid we're not sending in civilians. I... I am not a civilian. A midwife, I'm a midwife. is a civilian. I am a midwife and I have a responsibility for those people up there. Well, Are you really going to reject a midwife like this? Uh, you see this guy kind of looks over to uh, one of the other the other black guard guarding the store, and you see the other black guard laughs, and this guy laughs too, begins to laugh back. <laughs> Look, sorry, man. I understand you're like a priest or something, but unfortunately, in our books, this still counts you as a civilian. So unless you're equipped with protective gear, uh, salvage work, you know, uh, proper safety harnesses, etc., uh, we're not sending you in there for your safety and everybody else in there, all right? Hey, there's just one, one boy, teenager, whatever you want to call him up there. His name is Pint. Hell, whatever fuckwats that go up there, that <laughs> to look for him, make sure he's safe. Because if he isn't, he does not come out of that tower in one piece. Well, you're going to regret it. You got that? <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah, I, I got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, good. I will talk to you again later, and there better be very good answers after that. And she kind of just stalks away. Fucking uh, Karen. Ooh, jeez Louise. And yeah, you stalk away. Um, yeah, I think uh, Gertrisa and Oren, I think after the event, you can see that happen in the distance. Uh, and uh, all right, now Griff and Willow, you have you have made it back to the sort of central little camp that's set up here. All right. Yeah, I feel like I'm not actively seeking anybody out, but uh, kind of just gonna stand stand there. I feel like she's standing there with her hands on her hips and kind of looking around, like expectantly. Okay, well, I got him. I is anybody? I there were people standing here earlier, Griff. I. And over to you comes Reeson and Patrick, please. Young Willow, I have bad news. Oh, well, not, not more bad news. Not too bad in 
in these circumstances. I guess that wasn't a good... This isn't really my circumstance. Look, we have to leave. That's <laughs> what I'm getting at. It's, uh, uh, okay. Uh, uh, I guess you can explain why as we're leaving. I'm not going to question it. You know, at this point, let's just oh, get out of here. no, no. You have, to, you have to figure out your own way. I, I presume you have a home, correct? Uh, yes, of course. <laughs> I just mean as everybody. What? A, oh, hold on, you think I have a bodyguard but not a home, Patrocles? Well, I'm just saying, you acted... Uh, what I'm getting at is I'm a retired paladin. My duties are needed here. My information is needed. I, I still have much to offer to these men. Oh. And I have to go with reason here. We must prepare an incursion to investigate what's left of these bubbles. Attempt to find the ones who did this. Oh, and look! You found your weird little friend. Hello there, little man. Uh, hey... How's it? How's it going? No, that's that's a stupid question. It's pretty bad right now. It's pretty all bad. Yep, you got that one. Yeah. Pretty all bad. We're fine, uh, considering the circumstances, though. Thank you for your kindness, little weird man. Look, uh, we're not heading this part of the investigation. So, see the terrifying woman over there. Hmm. Oh yeah, I've heard of her. That's Magia Bo, yeah, head of the Black Guard. You'll want to speak to her. Tell her how you came across this little bomb threat message or what have you. Certainly seems whatever information broker you were dealing with dealt you true. Sure, yeah, okay. I can do that. Reason steps up. Tell me, you came across this information legitimately, didn't you, my little friend? I mean, I didn't stab anybody for it. I don't know how you come across information <laughs> illegitimately. Sister Spring, I assure you. You can come across information illegitimately. <laughs> <laughs> well, considering as, as I'm c confused to the question, yeah, I came across it legitimately. All right, then. Then there shouldn't be any problems with you speaking too low. Yes, she's a woman of virtue. And as long as you play equally as virtuous with her little games, she'll treat you fine. Below. We'll meet again soon. Perhaps you can come to my manor. I can show you a few things, hmm? Mm, sure. Here, let me write down my address very quickly. Certainly. <laughs> have you? Yeah, he kind of scrawls on like a piece of like the end of his tunic and then it, <laughs> rips it off. Oh, wow, that's... Well, thank you for uh, sacrificing a piece oh, it's fine. of I have tunic for me. Several dozen. Oh, okay, <laughs> if I had paper, I would do otherwise. Take this. Uh, I'm okay. generally busy on the weekdays. Uh, you know, Thursday evenings kind of tough for me. Look, just just call. We'll figure out a time. Anyways, I have to go. Bye bye now. Okay, I'll uh, call for you. Mm. Okay. Yep, that's it. And uh, makes his way out. Recent uh, doesn't leave exactly with him. Will everyone be all right? Is there anything I can offer before I make my way? No, I th I think I'll personally be okay. And thank you, Major Reason. Do you have any issues? You can leave a message at my office. I'll try my best to get back to you. Or you can pass a message through Nociel. I get the feeling this won't be the last time we see each other. Oh, through no... Uh, oh, through, oh, okay. Well, I guess you two know each other. That's... Okay, will do. All She's right, a friend. It. I'm sure Sinetta will catch you up. Uh, oh, okie dokie. All righty. Sounds peachy keen. Good. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and once again, Patrickley's well out of earshot. And uh, Reason looks over at you, Griff, and he winks. And then uh, he leaves. Well, that's... Hmm. Huh. Huh. Well, alrighty then. That's uh, beneficial, I suppose. And then, yeah, I feel like around this time, uh, Gertrisa, Orin, I feel like you can uh, reunite with, uh, with these two for a moment before Bo makes her way back over. Uh, yeah, Orin, are you still with me, or... I think Oren's gonna... You said there's, like, medics and stuff about fixing people. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. I think he's gonna... Now that Ebo has walked away, I think he's gonna make his way over to, like, a cot or something. But he'll just kind of, like, wave at the group. Like, give, like, a hand raise and then point to the wound and to the cot. Um, but... Hi there, yeah. Oren. You look like hell. Oh. Yeah. It's not great. I'm gonna go get this patched up. Uh, don't do anything stupid. Well, I mean, you yeah. uh, already there, buddy. Oh no. Um. Well, 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 well. Um. We'll see how it all pans out. But um. 
Yeah, you look you look like you look like trash right now. Goodness. Yeah, go go get that go get that fixed up. Don't let that lady take you anywhere. If she tries to take you anywhere, call for me. Oh. Don't don't let her do anything to you, okay? Wait, would she do would she do things to me? Yes. Oh. Gulp. We will certainly try and avoid that. If you guys know stuff about this, be very careful about how you phrase it, because she will take any excuse to put you in one of those carriages and cart you off to... Oh, stop your worrying and lay down. I know. I just really don't like that woman. Noted. Thank you, well, Orin. We, we can handle ourselves, don't you worry, Orin. Thank you for the, um, the heads up. Yeah, you guys all kind of take a moment to help Orin over to, to kind of get to a cot, get some medical some medical professionals over to begin to assist you. Uh, clearly, like, some university, uh, some, like, you know, Brazicott Technical and then some, you know, High Elven. Uh, what was that? University of High Elven Divine, Divine Magic. High Elven University of Divine Magic students. Um, well, yes. <laughs> yeah, maybe you recognize some of these assholes. Like, yeah. all uh, unpaid intern types uh, that are kind of assisting with this, this rescue effort. Not an incredible yeah. amount of wounded, but enough. Uh, I want I want it to be noted that uh that after hearing what uh, what Oren had to say Griff's knees are just knocking. <laughs> oh, he is, no. He is so nervous. No. I'll be okay, Griff. I'm sure, you know, just don't say more than you need to, you know? How much do I really need to say? I mean, we could we could like get out of here like right now. Like we we could well, no, no, Griff, that would probably look pretty suspicious if we did that. But we already look pretty suspicious! Well, yes, that's why we're talking to her, and everything will be fine. She'll be like, oh, you two scamps, you're so lovable, look at you scamps. That's, uh, that's exactly what she'll say. It'll all be fine, Griff. Okay, that's... Oh, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some, be I'm gonna very do some bad deep breathing. As well, though. Oh, I'm gonna do some deep breathing. Woo! That's and good, I, yeah. Griff, Griff just starts pacing. Do some, do some deep breaths. It'll all be okay. Uh, it'll all be okay. Sorry. Oh, I was just wondering if Zanette has gotten there yet. Um, shit, where were you headed? I guess I, I kind of went back to where I was previously after le- leaving those guards. Oh, that's right, you just got done with the guards. I think it totally makes sense to me that you, you can make it over to the group at this point. You can see them, you know, kind of mulling about. Distinctive group of weirdos, I think. Is Oren still there, or has he left already? Uh, he's, I don't think he's talking to the group anymore. I think he's over, um, you know, kind of being attended to, but I don't think he's left, per se. Okay. There you folks are. Have you seen Major Reason? Uh, well, yes, I just saw him a moment ago. He was right over there, with Patrick, please. Okay, I need his help for a bit. Uh, oh. which, which way did you say he went? Uh, he's right over there. Are you okay, Miss Annette? I'm I'm fine, Willow. Are, are you all right? I haven't s- spoken to you yet. Thank you for asking. Yes, I'm perfectly okay physically. Any wounds? Major trauma? Anything that needs to be healed? Ah, uh, no, no, not physically. Again. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll be over there talking to Reese, and if you need to talk to me about anything, you too, Griff. If the, you have any wounds, physical or otherwise. He, he's Griff's just mumbling to himself, pacing back and forth, like trying to get his story straight in his head. <laughs> <laughs> Griff's a little shaken up too. We thank you, Miss Annette. Always here to help. Um, excuse me, I have, I have business to take care of. And she goes over to where Reeson had stopped off to. Yeah, you can see him way, way, way in the distance. Him and Patrick Lees are like power walking away. But uh, I, I don't even think you have to roll. I, I think since you know, still visible, you can. Probably catch him and make your way fast enough. Um, however, in the time it's going to take you to do that, um, yeah. So Griff, you're pacing back and forth, muttering mm-hmm. to yourself, trying to get your story straight. Um, and then, yeah, you're in your head. All right, kid. So, what were we doing here? Um, uh, I um, uh, we were, we were working for Lewis. We were, we were, uh, we were serving cakes. Yeah. Yeah. What if they talk to him? Um, uh, we were, oh God, um, uh, well that actually might be better. Um, uh, um, uh, oh, we, ooh, ooh, the, 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 the sister lie worked pretty good. We could, we could run that gambit again. That, that, that went pretty well. These are people with resources, kid. They can investigate. 
the sister thing will fall through. Uh, jeez. Oh, no. Um, uh, I was, um... I, uh, I, 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 I snuck in because I, I really wanted to, to see a party. They, that, uh, you know, it's like when a, I don't know, it's, it's, a uh, it's, it's, it's like when your buddy ODs and you, and you take him to the hospital and they don't arrest you because you, because you did the right thing. Is that, with that, with that track? Was that, is that a thing? No. Oh boy. Um. Look, stick with the cake story. If they find the old man and they push, we figure out something else. The cave story? The cake story. Oh, the cake kid, story. Yeah, of course. And then, yeah, and then around now, uh, from behind you. Ahem! <clears throat> and yeah, there, standing in the flesh, tall, opulent, and repulsive, Mashiabo, leader of the Black Art. Um, are, are you the one I'm supposed to be talking to? Uh, that depends who you're supposed to be talking to. Were you the one that got word of the little bomb threat? Oh, yes, yes, that that is, that is me. Hello. So, speak. Uh, 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 hi, hi, um, yeah, I was, um, I was, uh, I, I was, uh, uh, wandering around, um, you know, after the party, and, uh, I happened to, um, I happened to overhear, um, I happened to overhear, uh, some, some individuals, uh, plotting some, some, some great dastardly deeds. They were they were saying that uh, they really needed to get out of here because uh, a a bomb was about to go off. And who were these individuals? They were monkeys. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy, but I saw them too. Good I personally don't men. believe it. Miss Catrice, we do not need your input right now. We know, we know you do I not believe in the ridiculous. monkey men. We know you stubbornly refuse to believe in the monkey men that all the rest of us saw. <laughs> like these aren't like ghosts. Like we know they were there. It I does mean, sound pretty ridiculous. No, we I saw mean, monkey men. Yeah. I, I don't think the old lady would lie. I mean, she seems she seems fairly trustworthy out of the lot of you. You think this I, old lady with the big old I certainly the, didn't see them. Oh come on! You could ask like anybody that was there. There were monkeys. They were serving fruit. Yeah. Yeah, come on, you could even ask Patrocles. We commented on them together, it was weird. I bet you can't even name one of these monkeys. I I think... I think I'm with the old woman. I don't know if you could name any of these monkeys in Sister detail. Sister fucking Spring. Yeah, I could. <laughs> Orangutan, gorilla, chimpanzee, that's three of them. <laughs> that's a wow, that's more monkeys than I know. That is three monkeys. <laughs> That's a lot of. That's all the monkeys I know. You're I could keep going. Gibbon, lemur, I I. That's enough monkeys. Now you're getting past the point, kid. Look, you're telling me monkey terrorists just blew up this party. <laughs> yeah. Um, Essentially. They said they were. They said they were part of the Crimson Vigil. The Crimson Vigil. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That is certainly information I'm interested in hearing. Look, kid. I think we need to bring you in for further questioning. Uh, uh I um, I actually, uh, I, I have, I have places to to be. I could like write down anything uh, you want to know. We could um. Uh, Christ, kid. We're in the thick of it. Look, we... uh, tell her you got some kind of previous engagement. Uh, yeah. Um, I uh, my sister needs her medicine. Your what? My <laughs> sister needs her if medicine. Your sister is very sick. And no one else can get her her medicine. No, uh, no, they, th- she needs it a special way. She's got a... I mean, you could have just mm-hmm. told me, Grief. I, I, I would be more than happy to... I'd rather you. not get into the circumstances of how she needs her medicine administered. Yeah, uh, Sister Spring, good, Tracy. You don't want to be so invasive, do you? Wow. Oh, well, it, if it's an enema, don't worry, I'm no prude. <laughs> Oh no. My sister also doesn't know you. All right, um, that's enough. That's enough. I don't want to hear about your sister's medicine. Look, if you have to go administer some life saving drug or something, kid, fine. Just give me your name and where I can find you. Oh, um, my name is Yarl. <laughs> she looks up. Yarl. Yes. Your name is Yarl. Yarl Viraj. Huh. You know, it's kind of funny considering she jacks a thumb binder. The only other Jarl I've ever met is about 30 feet behind me. Yeah, my folks figured it was uh, time to get another one. 
Uh huh. You know, you, there's there's just so little Jarls. Like there's a ton of Alexes and 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 she Michaels. She starts to do but... that cop thing where she's looking a little too closely at your pupils. Clearly, just really looking in your eyes. Uh huh. You feeling okay, kid? Well, no, because you know we're in the middle of a of this. I'm uh-huh. kind of shaken up. Trauma and all, sure. All right, Jarl Visage. Virage. Virage. All Visage right. is my brother's name. Uh, cute. Okay. So, where can <laughs> I find you, Mr. Virage? Uh, I'm normally around Red Row. Red Row, huh? Where in? Pretty big part of the city. Um. Uh. Just around. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Over at the, uh, over at the, 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 the brown hook. You can't miss it. On the corner of, of, uh, oh. where the brown hook is. It's a, it, oh. it's a, ta- it's a little tavern. I live right above it. Oh, the brown hook. Uh, <clears throat> quite little name. That is quite, I will. All right. Well, I mean, it's okay. You don't have to like, you don't have to, uh, you know, give it more than it's worth. You know, it's kind of a dump, but, um. I'll send my men. Okay. I certainly won't be traveling to somewhere above an establishment named the Brown Hook. Snaps her little book closed. Looks over to you, Willow. Hmm? Do you have any information that might be of an interest to me? Uh, well, give me just a moment. Uh, No, no, I don't believe I do, actually. Fine, then. And, And then about now... Approaching from from sort of the, the shadows of the crowd, uh, a tall figure. Well, it seems as if you are getting up to trouble. Isn't that right, Marshy Apo? And Abo turns around to Mr. Gunter Sound. And uh, he looks around and he briefly makes eye contact with you, Griff. Oh. But for the second time today... He winks. Oh. So, Abel, have you found any stories for me here? Hmm. No. Not yet. This is all private investigation, Gunter Zound. Yeah. But now it is. Won't come yesterday. Won't come tomorrow. We shall see whose story it is. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Abo just kind of shudders visibly. God, you're a <laughs> fucking creep. And uh, she, yeah, like knocks him on the shoulder and pushes past him and uh, walks back over to her guards. That was really cool, Mr. Guntersound. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> Little Willow. Yes? I imagine you had a particular perspective on these events, yeah? Why? Yes, one could say so. Well, if uh, perhaps you wanted to share those details mm-hmm. with me, I would be more than interested in hearing them. Yeah. You mean like you? <clears throat> you mean like you mean like if I if I were to like write a you know like write a write a little write a little something for you? Is that is that what you're asking me? Oh, are you a writer, little girl? <laughs> well. Can anybody really call themselves a writer? I mean, <laughs> why, yes, I am. I am a writer. I have never heard a more stereotypical writer response to that question. <laughs> oh. Well, I suppose that's a good thing. Well, I was simply offering to interview you. <laughs> but I was looking for the... It seemed like maybe there was going to be a but there. But... If you can find a character reference for your writing, bring it and your resume to my office, and perhaps I will be interested in this writing of yours. Okay, okay, okay. I won't <laughs> let you down, Mister Gunter Sound. And yeah, he looks over, looks over at uh, Lincoln's at you, Griff. Aren't you, strangely dressed little man? Um. Do you have any interesting stories to tell? No, I sure don't. A stranger. <coughs> ah. Well, 
You seem like uh, a dead end there. Old lady, have you any perspective on these events you wish to share with me before I make my way? Oh, boy, do I. Okay, never mind. And you see in the distance, Mr. Jarl is like holding, you know, holding a door open of a carriage. Come on, Gunter Zound, we need to get out of here. I'm tired of smelling all the pores. <laughs> get <laughs> Hefkin, Hefkin. <laughs> And uh, oh yeah, Gunderson <laughs> turns his head from listening to that. Well, it seems I have been called. I will see you soon, little Birlo. And perhaps you, little strange man. And me, uh, I, I, I do uh, have some stories I can tell. That's okay. And uh, yeah, I, I'd like hold on. I'd like to give I'd like to give Mister Gunterson a little wink when he when he when he speaks to me. Okay. Yeah. Cool. The, the same dumb wink that I tried to do cool uh, earlier in his office the other day. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know if it's quite as sly as that time. You're probably a little frazzled, but yeah, you wink okay. at him. And uh, it maybe registers, maybe doesn't. Gunter Zahn's one of those guys that everything seems to come across the same. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, he very evenly and coolly uh, makes his way over to the carriage, he gets his way in and clatters away. Bye-bye, Mr. Gunterzound. I'll send you that character reference and story by... Uh, w- sorry, when was it that you wanted that? And he's gone. <laughs> I, just, I don't damn. think he wanted to hear what I had to say. Damn, Griff, do you remember? Oh, good, good, Teresa, do you remember? Oh, damn it. Oh, this it, is it, why I failed. Okay. It's okay. Hey, hey, hey. This it's is why okay. I failed um, my classes at the university. This is why I had to drop out. Oh, damn it. Hey, 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 it's okay. It's all right. We're, we're going to, we'll work this out. And, and hey, I can. it tomorrow morning. It'll, it'll be okay. Yeah, it'll be okay. All right. And, uh, hey, I can, I can give you that character reference. I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty cool with, uh, Mr. Gunther Zound. Uh, really? Yeah. He I thinks- mean, you probably couldn't tell from, you know, uh, few seconds ago but um yeah yeah we're we're kind of we're kind of tight i just didn't want him knowing i was you know off vigilanteing oh oh well well if you could provide that character for reference for me i i would be overjoyed oh absolutely yeah no i'd be honored to write it uh, i do believe i will take the rest of the evening off tonight though after the events of the evening do you th- two think he liked me i don't think he liked me <laughs> you know, you 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 know what, you know what, Gertrisa, you're just, you're just, you're a real a real good acquired taste. Ooh, that's a good way of putting it, Griff. That's <laughs> a, yeah, you. I, I do suppose so. I I can be a little intimidating, can't I? Like like a fine wine, Gertrisa. You know, you're not. Yeah, you know, I'll leave it at that before I say something, something that, that that's not as, you know, um, yeah, okay, okay. Oh, you really are such a charm, uh, Grief, and I give, I give him a little pinch on the cheek. Okay, and we move back over uh, to Sonette at the edge of the crowd, managing to just barely catch Reese and Patrickles as they are exiting this kind of entire disaster zone to, to Amaranth proper. You can't quite tell, but they're leaving the disaster zone, clearly, leaving to another part of Amaranth. Probably by the general direction and of the little time you've spent in Amaranth, uh, probably heading towards the Basilica. Oh, I thought they were going, they were helping with the, helping the Black Guard. Uh, no, these guys are, they are purposefully moving somewhere else. Major Reeson, sir. And he stops in his tracks and turns. Oh, oh, oh. Sonette, I'm sorry. I didn't have time to stop and say goodbye. We're in a bit of a rush. You can walk with us for a moment, though. We're headed to the Basilica. Oh, oh, of course. I was just... I thought you were going to help with the Black Guard, and I... I I needed someone to help me uh, help others. I'm headed to the Basilica with the express intent of gathering a team so that we can find the truth of what's happened here. I'm helping in a different way, Sonette. I'm sorry I can't be more immediate with the uh, operations. Ebo is leading that. No, the, the idiots won't let me up the tower in any case. Of course not, Sinet. Frustrating is what it is. Well, Sinet, it's absurdly dangerous. We have no idea if one of those pebbles could come crashing down at any moment. I wouldn't have anybody sent you up there. I'm hesitant to even allow a boat to send her blackguard. But there's people up there. Of course. I, they are going to get them out. I won't but, feel right if I just sit by and 
while they're sitting by up there. Sinet, you are an incredible woman, and this drive you have is admirable. But remember your place. And Reason continues onwards with Patrocles. I'll see you soon. I don't have time to waste, Sinet, I'm sorry. It, it's fine. You owe no favors to me. And she kind of just walks back the other way. Get one of those classic, like, distant crowd shot disappear into the masses. You know, one of those. Okay, where are you headed back to? Is that this sort of the, the group? Or are you going to you have a specific intent in mind? Uh, if the group's still in the same spot, I'll go there. But I'll, I'm just heading back to where I last saw them. Um, I think, are you guys, are you, are you splitting? And, and, you know, scattering to the wind? Or are you, are you waiting a second for Sinet and, and Orin? Uh, honestly, I feel after that last conversation, um, after Willow said, like, I think I'm going to take the rest of the evening off, she did actually head back to her apartment after that. Okay. Yeah, so Willow isn't there when you get back, Sinet, but, uh, Gertrisa, did you, did you take off? Yeah, I, I think Gertrisa is going to wait around a little while. Okay, so yeah, I think you managed to find Gertrisa and, and Griff, or either. Uh, Griff has been itching to get out of here since, like, since touchdown. He's, he, he, he vamooses as soon as there's an excuse. Okay, so yeah, you just find Gertrisa. Well, from the looks of it, it's just you and me again. Yes, I suppose so. How are you holding up, dearie? I don't like being put into situations like this. Yes, I can't imagine any of us do. But you're a strong woman, Sinet. We'll, we'll pull through this. I'll see you at Spitz. Yes, I... I think I'll stick around for a bit longer, though. They won't let me up in the tower. I'll help tend to the injured. Well, whatever you do, take care, Sinet. And uh, I think uh, Gertrisa rides off. Okay. So, Orin, uh, as you're kind of laying there, I think you're being tended to. Um, probably just, you know, some overworked college-aged, uh, you know, uh, high elven university doing magic student. Uh, it kind of leaves you alone for a while. <clears throat> probably eventually, probably close your eyes, right, just to rest for a moment. Uh, and then, yeah, you feel your head kind of lift. Some, sort of that, you know, that feeling of like a hand gently resting behind your hair. And, uh, yeah, you, f- you feel thighs slip underneath your head. And somebody begins to, like, brush your hair very lightly uh, on, on the cot. Are you all right, Orin? Uh, I, maybe. I mean, I feel better now that, you know, I'm getting patched up. Ooh, ooh. And I, yeah, I mean, I'll open my eyes. And I don't know anything else yet. Still in her London sun uniform. Hmm. Good to hear, Orin. Good to hear. I think he, like, snaps his eyes back shut and kind of... I don't know. Again, straightens himself up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, are you is there? Is there something you need, Magister? Shh! Don't use that language here, Orin. And you feel her hair, or you feel her hand like tighten on your hair for a second, um, and then and then yeah, relax. Yeah, go. Yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, it goes back to straightening your hair back into place. I was worried when you. Entered the building, bleeding from your torso like you had been impaled. Glad to see you patched up. Circumstances have shifted, Oren. Yeah. So, what, uh, what, what does this mean going forward for us? It means that the parameters of our little game changed. The player has switched sides unexpectedly and our strategy moving forward must employ our new little piece we'll have a debriefing soon the regular place uh, um good yes thank you if you want proper details in the meantime I think Sinet will be your best option I think you're right did Willow show you the little gift I gave her gift? yes a memento of a friend. Nimva. He was careless. He poked his nose where he should not have loudly. 
he threw his money around in ways that left a paper trail, and people began to notice what he was doing. Tatters beat the teeth out of his head with her bare hands and brought them to me in a bag. I had his body hung on a red row. I want to be very clear, Orin. I was very worried about you. But I assure you, my worry is conditional. Careful. And then, yeah, slips out from the cot. Uh, fuck. Understood. Good. I don't mean to scare you, Orin. After tonight, I feel as if tensions may be increasing. The election approaches, and I think we have a new favorite horse in the race. Sunrise. Sunrise. Ah, oh, okay. Talk to you soon, Orin. Talk to you soon. And she very, very, very lightly pats your wound. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I think anybody left, which I guess Willow's gone, right? Gertrude is gone. So, Nat, you can see, um, yeah, you can see Nocien sort of in the distance now, kind of finishing this conversation with Orin. Clearly, yeah, trying to disappear into the crowd. I guess this is where Sunette puts her hair in ponytail, rolls up her sleeves and, sleeves and starts going to people. She notices that Orin's already been patched up, and she joins in with the medical team using... Uh, her medical training along with a little bit of magic to <laughs> fix people up. I can't think of a place that is needed more. You do some actual hero work. <laughs> so that helps with the wounded. Orin tends to his own wounds and everybody else disperses into the night. Uh, or what resembles it in Amaranth. As the guards and the assistants making sure the wounded are taken care of conglomerate and the public amasses to witness what has to be one of the largest accidents in Amaranth in recorded history. Now, we make our way somewhat later in the evening to find our friend Griff. Hunter? I didn't specify before, um, like uh, I said, Griff sleeps on the street, which is half true. Um, when I imagine the works, I imagine this sort of labyrinthian uh, series of alleys and and, and uh, where even the roads are a little um, uh, out of the way, um, where if you're, if you're outside 50% of the time, you're still not seeing the sky. Um, just a, a, the sheer amount of overhangs and uh, buildings upon buildings upon buildings. Uh, and you can like almost see the lines where different ages of buildings have been built. Um, uh, and uh, I imagine uh, this is a very specific thing I see of um, like an alley that doesn't lead anywhere uh, like just a dead end alley um, and uh, you look up and the, the buildings just go incredibly far up and up 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 into the um, I'd say like around the middle of this tall multi-story building it's where three buildings are intersected um, I imagine there's this sort of there's, there's this hammock like net uh, woven up near the top um, uh, right next to like a, uh, like, I don't know. <laughs> I was about to say an AC unit, um, <laughs> just sticking out solid something. Um, yeah. Some sort of machinery, like maybe a, could be like a, a one of those pipes that ejects smoke. Yes. You know yes. Yeah, smoke stacks. And, so smoke like, stacks and, and, uh, there's a little, um, uh, it's definitely a bit of an acrobatic feat to get on up there. Uh, but yeah, the, that is kind of Griff's home. Is just this little um, hammock net uh, in the middle of, um, uh, I guess, in the middle of of nowhere as as much as nowhere can be in the middle of a city, if you if you know what I mean. A little little hidden pocket. Yeah, that sounds incredibly cozy. Yeah, and uh, up uh, up there, like on the machinery that makes like a little shelf. There's uh, there's a like a big pile of uh, adventure rags and um, like weird tales magazines and what have you um, there's probably a little bag with maybe some 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 canned food or something uh, a little cup um, just you know uh, en enough to make it a home and Griff uh, Griff clambers on up uh, into the net uh, as he does making his his very practiced jumps I bet if you looked uh, you could see little markings of where his feet have 
um, uh, hit the, the, the concrete um, multiple times. And uh, he gets on up and he starts uh, starts taking off all his ropes and cords and such. Gets in his uh, 90s. Yeah. Get, get <laughs> nah, I, I think he only has about two changes of clothes. He gets in a more comfortable pair is what I'm getting at, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, and I guess he, he takes out like a... A little scrap piece of paper and a pencil, and he starts writing a uh, sort of a a reference letter for Willow. And yeah, resting against your thigh. You did a good job today, kid. Thanks. I I don't know. It it, it just I I felt like I didn't know what to do. I I just you know just sort of jumped from from one thing to another without really doing anything. Well, what do you think life is, kid? I guess that's right. Quit overthinking. You did great. You focused. You had a mission in front of you. And you made that mission happen. And hey, I think you saved those kids at the end there, too. <laughs> uh, I, I tried. I God, everything's just so much more complicated than I figured it would be. It. I don't know. I, I thought I, it just looks so easy in these. And he like... <laughs> He does a very overdramatic, like, sweep of the one stack of novels he has. <laughs> like six books, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, one of them falls out through the net. Oh, 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 oh God. Oh, man. Oh, no, I feel like it does fall right. And I feel like Hitch, like, slides off your thigh and, like, and, whoosh, and it manages to just barely snag it in his hoop. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. You want to pull me back up, kid? Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm telling you, see what you achieved today. I know it wasn't exactly A++, but it was something. And it's a step towards the truth. Yeah, I hope so. Okay, and then I, you know, probably... Griff probably sleeps. Hitch probably hung up on his special hook or whatever you keep him. Um, yeah. So your relationship to Hitch, all right, do you... Probably don't pray to him or anything, right? He's not that sort of small god because you don't worry, you don't practice the religion of of perch. Yeah, it's a yeah, it's more so like a. I don't know. I I don't want to describe it as parasitic. Um, mm-hmm. I think we um, I don't know how much I want to sort of like establish out of the fiction. Um, I think it's a good time to establish a little bit and, and for yeah. viewers that or listeners that aren't you know, one hundred percent privy to what we're going for. Hitch is the the little god um, that the uh, that that lives within the ropes that uh, that Griff uses to become the Red Snare and to uh, uh, to, to to bebop all around the spire uh, as he goes. Um, and uh, yeah, he uh, they sort of work together as a as as workers towards a common goal, workers towards a means to an end. Um, yeah, we. I definitely don't pray to him. I guess. I guess to to put it, we use each other. Yeah. Yeah. So many gods. Uh, you're going to be praying to before you're you're passing out in your little hammock. Um. Yeah. I pray. I pray to the masterless mask, the, um, the the, the drow folk god, um. Uh, who stands for uh, uh justice and. Um, sort of a, the sort of, the sort of Marxist God, the, 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 Mm. the God of the proletariat, if you would. Yeah. Remember to pay attention that there are like advances and stuff and there are ways to get advances outside of your class and the maskless mask, uh, again, actually, uh, kind of the main focal point of another one of the classes, um, the masked who, yeah, their whole thing is they worship the uh, masterless mask and they can use masks to like change powers and stuff. Um, They can can acquire masks that give them like literal powers. Oh, hot Uh, damn. It's very, very cool. Uh, So uh, probably worth looking for uh, into. Yeah. If that's who you pray. Okay. So yeah, probably pray to some sort of little mask effigy. Uh, Then yeah, sleep the night away gently. I think it's just like a chalk outline on a, on the building wall. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so some, some gentle soft prayers sent to a, a, a gentle god of, of justice and retribution and, and above you, the cranking, pumping, thrumming engines of the works continue on their way. And I feel like there's something sort of hypnotic and, and lullaby-esque to the smokestack that your hammock is hung next to, sort of this uh, 
continuous pulse, you know, this sort of. Yeah, I, I imagine this this section of uh, uh, this section of the spire is is very much clockwork. Like it is, there is a there there is a sort of rhythm to it. Yeah, this is not like a residential as as residential as the works gets. You know? mm-hmm. I feel like you're buried in the guts of it all. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you sleep the night away. Griff, you awake the next morning, ready for work, I suppose, right? Yeah, yeah. I need to I need to get back to the back to the furnace. Um, I pick up my uh, you know all my stuff, pack it up into a little bag, um, and uh, yeah, uh, I oh I I take the letter that I wrote, the letter of recommendation. Um, and yeah, I, I trot on over to the furnace. Rise and shine, kid. I, I, I don't think it's probably a super long walk. I imagine you probably set a base pretty close to, to work. Yeah, yeah, I didn't. I it was a it was it was a definitely mind taxing process of I, I don't want to be too close because that'd be weird. That'd be weird. Right. But like, I don't I don't want like a big commute. Um, but like there's this I don't know what. And he yeah, it, you get the idea. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Uh, down, a, down a rabbit hole of overthinking uh, what alley to sleep in. And he chose pretty decently, I think. Yeah. The commute's probably nice. And you make it to the furnace, the towering... Uh, I imagine it's just like a big schlockers. brutalist block with a bunch of different doors coming out of it and some, uh, some like, flush with the stone itself windows. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's fine with me. Uh, you make your way into this, yeah, brutalist, massive furnace, uh, and uh, it is a shitty place to work to only begin to scratch the truth there. Uh, you know, just an absolute hive of um, scum and villainy in terms of newspaper work. Like, I think half of the journalists are probably, like, mercenaries, too. Like, just absolute scum, I feel like, in the lower lobbies. Hence the reason why you're able to get a job here. But Yeah, real, real, real Hunter S. Thompson vibes in this place. Exactly. Hunter S. Thompson meets... Uh, you know, 1888 uh, fantasy. <laughs> uh, a little bit of the iconoclast thrown there for our Waco folks. Yeah. That's right. Um, I will not claim Bran publicly on recording, but uh, he existed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I But we discussed last time, I think there's like a regular ritual for you getting in to uh, Gunter Zahn's office. And yeah, I feel like it goes off without a hitch again. Secretary swings you in. Secretary's not a good word, right? We can't use that anymore. The um, assistant lets you in. Is is secretary not a good word? Some people say that it's supposed to be like demeaning, <laughs> gendered. Like I think it's oh. gendered, but uh, I, I, yeah. Because like, but I th- assistant is fine. It's whatever. Yeah, it seems like yeah, most people first. Assume. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't have a dog in this fight. I really don't. I'm just trying to be nice here. No, I, I get you. Uh, I get you. Uh, uh, the internet's so hard. Uh, so yeah, the the assistant uh, waves you through. You make your way to Mister Grunter's own office. Uh, I, I think um, when you get in there, um, you know, chair is turned like last time, and you can hear the you know the scratching of pen to paper. Um, I uh, I give a little little cursor like little knock. Um, uh, M- Mr. Mr. Gunter's own. Oh, I see they left you. They let you in. Great. That is fine. Yes. Um, uh, t- two two things. Uh, one. Um, I uh. My, uh, a friend of mine um, said that you were interested in uh, a story of hers. Hmm. Yes, I did talk to a uh, particular woman after the incident last night. Turns around in his chair finally and smirks at you. Did you hear about this, Griff? Uh, sure, it's all a buzz. Everyone's talking about it. Certain they are. Yes. So this Willow is a friend of yours. Yeah, and she's she's a, a top notch investigator. Hmm. Can you vouch for her? Certainly. And I hand him my uh, my paper. Yeah, he takes it. Good. Excellent. You tell her. Kind of scans the letter. If she can produce a story and get it on my desk, I will look at it. If it is of appropriate quality, perhaps we can see what we can do, hmm? She'll, she'll be thrilled to hear that. Will she now? Do you know, uh... Griff kind of leans forward, puts his elbows on his desk, puts his hands together, kind of puts his chin on his hands. 
I am uh, a man who is interested in the details. Yeah. And I wonder, Griff, if you know any details about your friend. Before she writes this story, that I would need to know. Um, uh, any, uh, anything in particular? I mean, she's a, she's a swell gal. Incriminating, Griff. Oh, uh, not any more than you or I. <laughs> that is a good answer, Griff. Yeah, that is a very good answer. He leans back in his chair. Well, he has my offer. I don't have any work for you today, Griff. You can take the day off. Oh, uh, okay. Um, thank you. Uh, there, there's, there's one other thing. Hmm. I'm not quite good at these. Um, how, how would you put it? Uh, sort of. I guess secrets. I mean, I'm good at keeping secrets, just not good at, I'd say, participating in them. Um, you recognized me, didn't you? Well, aren't we feeling bold today, Grief? Of course I recognized you, boy. You wrap a bandana around your head, put some ropes around you. Does not mean a man like me attuned to details can't notice. I think it is noble what you do, Griff. Cute. As long as you keep yourself out of trouble, I won't mind. And if I know one thing about this business, this little thing you get yourself up to will provide plenty of material, hmm? You thought putting on a mask would protect you from your boss noticing? Come on. Thank you, sir. And uh, I think Griff, uh, Griff leaves. Yeah, uh, good result, let's you. Uh, are you gonna go to Willow? Uh, yeah. Uh, and on the way, he like as soon as he exits the office, he's, oh, oh man, oh man, that was cool. Oh man, I did like a did like a secret agent thing. That was, woo. I think and the I, assistant I like, looks over from the desk. I turn to the assistant. Of... You see? No, of course you didn't see that. Oh <laughs> man, I'll I'll be I'll be going. You get out of here. <laughs> yeah, I guess yeah. I go. Um, I go back to uh, oh, what's it called? Uh, the 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 gross little bar, Spitzes. Spitzes. That is probably going to be later in the night. Okay. Um, okay. Then I know. then I just you know wander, searching for Willow. Okay. I actually don't know that everybody knows about that meeting. Uh, I don't know that Oren has told everyone quite yet. I feel like, I mean, I feel, I kind of feel like it's assumed that after something like that, we be... Yeah. yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, you're right. Um, okay. So, uh, before we, we jump over to Willow, see what she's doing, um, before she meets up with Griff, let's, let's, uh, let's move elsewhere. Yeah, let's uh, let's do some Gertrisa town foolery. Yeah, let's do some so, old lady hygiene. So after uh, after the evening, everybody has had. Uh, where does you know? I, I assume Gertrisa ends up sort of in you know the manner she squats in. Yeah, I think she just goes to. Uh, I I think she just goes back to Ivory Row. Uh, maybe walks Belvin uh, for a little bit, and uh, yeah, goes to her corner in the manor. Uh, I think, uh, I think she's got like uh, a little cot that she sleeps in, uh, with a, a a box or something that Belvin kind of. Uh, well, no, I think it's more of a crate that Belvin kind of uh, curls up in at night. I think she uh, has a smoke. Yeah, I think Belvin sleeps easily. You probably sleep easily. Probably hear Corhol come in pretty late, grumbling. Uh, and and yeah, you know, awake in the morning. What is is Gertrice have anything really? Um, she she needs to pursue before sort of meeting up with everybody. I don't really know specifically that she has any obligations. I think she uh, 
she walks Belvin uh, in the morning. Like, first thing she does, and like, checks in with uh, Corville. And I think she'll check in with Feldspar, too, since she knows that he was present. Yeah, let's check in with Feldspar. What, what do you, where, where do you feel like uh, you meet him? I don't know. I feel like there's kind of a, a a marketplace or something in the main foyer of this manor, where uh, <laughs> kind oh, of like okay, a okay. like a forum. Because yeah. I I imagine that this that this mansion is just like you know a small community. Okay. Yeah. What do you say? Corville is like your closest neighbor in this general chunk. Um, that's why you kind of see him the most. But yeah, I like the idea of there being like a black market bazaar in the you know, the greeting room of this. Sure, we'll say that you come in in the morning and yeah, Feldspar is already uh, late in that and he's already playing jacks or some, you know, spire equivalent um, with some kids that are far younger than him, clearly taking their fucking money um, like a little scumbag uh, yelling out in triumph. That's what you get for not having fully developed reflexes, you little freaks. Not pay up. And, and yeah, he kind of looks up. <laughs> uh, oh, I, hey there, good Tracer. How's it going? I'm doing well. I just thought I'd check up on you. I know uh, last night was a little rough, eh? And she gives him a very conspicuous wink. Well, luckily, me and the boys had a little bit of a tip. So we made it out before everything got too crazy. Well, I... I'm, uh, I'm happy you stayed out of trouble, Feldy. Uh, do be careful in the future. Oh, Gatrisa, don't you worry. I am always looking out for myself. Oh, you Unless didn't... I'm with my sister. Then I'm looking to kill her. Because she's a bitch. Am I right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Is he just John Oh, Matthew? now don't talk like that, you little scamp. <laughs> I'm sorry, Gatrisa. I'm sorry. I'm just playing. I love my sister. She's my family. All right, all right. I'm going to keep playing this game. You want to buy in, Gatrisa? Uh, no, thanks. Go easy on them, though, she says, already walking out the door. I won't. Um, yeah, <laughs> and then he'll hear that. God. Uh, Waluigi motherfucker. I love him. Uh, <laughs> he's just 10 year old Wal. This is Waluigi's origin story. <laughs> <laughs> Waluigi orange origins. Oh, Waluigi shit. Inquisition. This is my magnum opus. It's <laughs> Waluigi origins. Uh, okay, yeah, Gertrisa makes her way out into the day. Um, I feel like it's a drizzly, rainy sort of day on Ivory Road. The, the canals above you in the Silver Quarter are leaking particularly bad today, and umbrellas are out in full force, and yeah, there's essentially like a full torrent dripping from the skies above this easy gray drizzle. Um, and yeah, blocking the light from, you know, you can kind of see these dim shafts of light cutting through from the windows, but uh, clearly, you know, the Sunlight Collective aren't out or anything, and people are kind of in a, a dim, dour mood. Uh, you hear cries on the streets of newspaper boys handing out uh, papers, crying about the largest event of the, I don't know, probably the week, the month, maybe. The destruction of Titus's spiral garden and his untimely assassination at the hand of the Crimson Vigil. Uh, and yeah, it just seems like on the whole, it's a pretty dim day. Um, does, does Gertrisa have an, an umbrella? Uh, I don't think she does. Uh, I don't think she really minds. Alright. Uh, I think she just kind of, uh, you know, walks Belvin you know, on his big old, I think, I don't think we've ever talked about Belvin, what ha- Belvin has in the way of a leash. I think that... It really is just like a length of rope that she ties around his neck. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, she's just walking him, uh, whistling. Yeah, just sort of uh, enjoying this brief reprieve. Meanwhile, the wounded Orin, I, I feel like, um, you know, you probably get taken back to the university uh, and then they keep you overnight in sort of like a, a big arcane holding room uh, filled with hundreds of other beds. Uh None of them, not not filled by any means. It's just a massive room. Um, you know, there's only probably like 12, 13, 14 victims overall. Um, not actually a very lethal event. It only seems like maybe three people died from the passing news you're able to catch. Um, and yeah, they release you in the morning. Yeah, I think Oren uh, probably heads uh, straight for 
either I don't know if Bill says a house or if he just kind of like vibes, but wherever well, he Bill knows says it, a house, yeah. Yeah, wherever he knows Bill this will be at the time. Um I think he kind of yeah, I think he just kind of makes a, a, a walk with purpose uh straight there. I think he's just trying to make sure he's not being followed or anything. Uh yeah. And of course that medium follow you can get get rid of that. Uh, yeah. Uh actually downgrade that into a minor for now, scarred. Um, we'll just say the the really really off chance you are shirtless people are gonna it's pretty bru- pretty gruesome at this point so pretty gruesome wound not gonna be able to compel somebody very well with that um, but yeah you're just gonna have to kind of heal it a little more to leave it just you know, scars in the distance mm-hmm. um, yeah I think you know that Billis lives in Red Row near uh, where he works you know he's uh, I feel like I may may have established something episode one a very long time ago about what he did. Um, but I'm hoping that I didn't. If I did, ignore it. Uh, but he is a he is a bouncer, uh, of course, and uh, he works working the gates of the arena, Mother Moons, one of the most highly visited spots in the entirety of the Spire in terms of money, hands, and uh, drunkards in particular. Um, and yeah, he lives not too far, kind of uh, off on a side street. And he, I think he just lives in sort of a, a shitty hovel. I, like, I think a modern equivalent would be, yeah, he just has like this very sad, you know, kind of run down uh, bachelor pad home. Uh, the, the door sort of like loosely affixed uh, on, on the, uh, you know, on, on the frame. Uh, yeah. Then, uh, yeah, just taking one last look around to make sure he's not being followed. Um, yeah, Orin just kind of walks up and knocks on the loosely hanging door um, and yeah there is a a tousle haired billis uh, uh not to be uh fat phobic again but just like sumo wrestler big like, right a lot of muscle underneath and yeah he's barely awake clearly uh yeah hey buddy uh you doing okay anybody been bothering you oh i'm fine man i'm fine what's what's going on you, you okay yeah do you, you mind if i come in yeah yeah yeah, yeah. come on come in come in Pulls open the door to reveal his wretched bachelor pad. We love it. I love this man. Uh, yeah, you know, like three pieces of furniture. One, of course, is his bed. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'll go plop on, you know, whatever chair, stool, whatever he has. Yeah, probably some stools around like a poker table equivalent. Um, okay. Ooh. Jeez, man, you, you sat pretty hard. You, you need a drink or something? Uh... I might appreciate it. We had a, uh, we went on a mission, and, um... I got a little, got a little booze tucked up. Hold up, hold up. Keep going, keep going! There was, a. Uh, you hear about that, uh, that explosion? At the spiral oh, gardens? yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, so, I was in one of those big old domes when it collapsed, and, uh, also, I, I kinda got stabbed by a heart's blood beast. <laughs> Brother, man, finally comes back around. That is a story! And, and yeah, you see, he's got some two glasses, kind of got a bottle of liquor now. Just sort of, you know, unmarked glass bottle, clearly from somewhere. Some rot gut. Uh, and yeah, pours, pours you a couple fingers of it, slides it your way. You were in a bubble and you got stabbed by something? What, what happened? Uh, yeah, there was a damn thing got blown up by the Crimson Vigil, they think. The Crimson damn Vigil? Okay, I think it is a good time to establish. Um, does does Billis know that you are in the in the ministry? I think so. I think Billis is probably the only person that knows. Period. Okay. So, did you guys like get some forewarning or something? Like, did they, you know, you cross wires? Uh, I I guess so. This guy who just joined our cell, he uh. He somehow managed to come across it, so I don't know. I don't know how he's connected, but you know, I yeah. lived. You think he could be? Uh, think he could be vigil in disguise? Nah, no way. This kid's too. Uh, I don't know, innocent. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, trust your judgment there. That's crazy. And the monster? What? What happened there? Just elf here, assholes. They decided it would be a fun idea to 
ship in a heart's blood beast and you know shoot it in a circle in a dome all valiant like that's horrible hmm damn I'm glad you're okay, buddy. Ooh. Kind of, yeah, leans back, pours himself another fifth, pours you another fifth. Yeah. Um, yeah, but that, anyway, that's besides the point. Uh, th- look, the reason I came here is, uh, I had a run in with, uh, our old friend Abo. Oh, fuck. Yeah. She, uh, she made sure to mention your name and, you know, her. Made some kind of threat. Yeah, I'm sure she'd love to be rid of me. Yeah. So I just... What'd she say? She cut my nuts off or something stupid like that? Oh, she just said, Ooh, your friend Bill is hope, better hope I don't find him. Mm. Goddamn shrew. Ugh, I'll be fine. She won't travel outside of Amaranth. She doesn't have the guts. Let's hope not. You might want to... Keep an extra eye out over your shoulder. Just for a little bit. Yeah. Maybe I will. So, you still got work lined up? I think so. Uh, this whole uh, fiasco seems to have opened up some kind of other opportunity. So, uh, at least for now, I think I uh, still got the contract. Hmm. Well, good on you. You need work. You know the arena's always hiring. Yeah. Well, let's hope I don't even have to stoop down to that, huh? No, oh, come on, asshole. <laughs> yeah, it wouldn't be so bad, as long as you still work here. Yeah, I'll always be around. Mother Moon needs my ass. <laughs> well, just wanted to make sure you're okay, buddy. Yeah, of course. I, I'm more worried about you, bud. You need somewhere to stay tonight? You, you think your place is safe? Uh, well, I don't want to put you in any more danger than you already are, man. No, you're my friend. Or and I, I care about you. Just stay here for the night, all right? I got some extra blankets. You can have my pillow. It's no big deal. Yeah, all right, bud. Yeah, yeah. You can have the rest of that bottle, you know. Just, just t- take the day, you know. I got work in a bit. Just, uh, you know, relax. That's a pretty crazy story you got there, bud. Yeah. Yeah, I guess What were you so. doing there in the first place? Work. Sometimes you gotta go to, you know, how work parties are. Uh, one of those. Yeah. One of those. Well, glad you're making it out. Glad you made it out one way or the other. Me too. Kind of scratches his ass. So, uh, <clears throat> when you're ready for work, you, you need you know, you got some food, a little bit in the larder, maybe some jam, like, a, like half a loaf of bread somewhere around here. Yeah, cool. Bottle's good. Thanks. And he shuffles off. I believe in this friendship so hard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kings yeah. supporting Spurs. kings. <laughs> Scene setting. <laughs> <laughs> uh no yeah i think he yeah i think Oren absolutely passes the fuck out nursing that bottle and i think he just kind of curls up on billis's shitty little bed uh kind of half cuddling this bottle yeah awesome yeah oh yeah billis uh slips a pillow under your head and makes his way out in his in his guard shit smelly as could be um okay sweet smelly man i love him so hey. Willow, what did you spend the evening doing? Uh, after the party, I feel like she, yeah, just makes her way back to the Silver Quarter. Uh, goes on back into her apartment. And, uh, yeah, maybe she lights up a candle and actually starts working on, uh, a letter. And I feel like at first she's getting up this, uh, getting out this pen and paper so she can, like, start working on whatever it was for Mr. Gunter Zound. Like, in her head, she's like, whatever, whatever it was I was supposed to write. Um, but she just gets a little bit overwhelmed from all the night. I think she's gonna write a letter to her family. Um. Okay. Yeah. Just, like, asking them, you know, how they're doing. 
asking how her little brother's doing, asking for more money, uh, <sighs> trying to <laughs> trying to relieve this uh, this fallout that I still have the almost broke fallout from uh, uh, buying my way into the ice baths all that time ago. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you can dismiss the panicked fallout, by the way. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's a, give me a compel roll. Let's okay. See, let's see if you can get that money. <laughs> Do I have a domain here? Um, yeah, you're in high society. I feel like your apartment's pretty nice, right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. At the very least. It's all your borrowed money. Very Byronic. Ah! The worst luck! Okay. Oh. God. Jeez. Follow it. Just... Every time. <laughs> okay. Um... It's just, just mark this minor fallout, and we will uh, resolve it whenever you receive your letter back. Oh, okay. Um, but uh, we, we will put overextended grace. Oh, no. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> okay. But, yeah. Uh, well, yeah, so I... I Saw's so gonna get drafters. mad. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of your own goddamn finances and learn how to be in it. I'm sorry, sweetie. It's $400. Uh, no, <laughs> Uh, what, what's a dollar? Uh, uh, the, the special Eastern money. That's normal money in the East. What happened to tri- uh, Puck? Figure uh, out your own damn it, so exchange rates. Tri- Darnarians. <laughs> Darnarians. <laughs> damn it. <laughs> you figure out your own goddamn currency. I don't know these things. Here's money. Bye. Um, that's everyone at Facade's letters. No, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I think you send, the, send uh, you can send this letter no problem. Uh, okay. Do you sleep eventually? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She does sleep eventually. Awesome. Uh, I, uh, I, you know, you sleep as restfully as you can, considering the night you had. Um, and uh, you, yeah, you wake the next morning. What's your What's your plans for the day? Mm, yeah, I feel first thing in the morning. She probably you know sends out that letter, um, and. Maybe she's, like, established a meeting place with Griff uh, previously. Go okay, and try sure. and meet up with him to follow up on this uh, Mr. Gunter's... Oh, wait! I did forget to say, there is one more letter, letter she writes and sends out. And that is a letter to Patrick Lee's uh, following up on the previous night. Ooh. Just, like, thanking him for being so valiant and, uh, yeah, all of that. And asking if there's a time where they could meet up again. Um Trying to set up an interview. Yeah. Okay. But I don't cool. think she explicitly mentions in the letter that it's going to be an interview or anything. She just asks if they can meet up again. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. So uh, after you drop off these two very important letters, you make your way to this this meeting point. Um, yeah. Do it. So so do we want to do we want to meet in the works or or where you are or somewhere in between? We could say we meet in a part of the low wall that makes yeah. its way into the works. Uh, yeah, let's just say you're, you mean in a portion of the low wall that makes its way into the works. Because, um, yeah, like we discussed, it's huge. It's sprawling. Mm-hmm. It cuts through most of the city. Okay. Yeah, I feel like she just kind of gets there at the designated meeting place early and kind of stands there looking in her uh, journal and, like, pretending to take notes. I'm sorry. I'm I Just having served as long as I had, I just imagined this, like, hilarious reality to the low wall. So, yeah, you're, you're taking your notes in the low wall. And, like, I feel like servers are, like... <laughs> freelance in this world like it's so big you just can sort of walk in and start serving people and then you just have to like find someone somewhere in there that's cooking oh, that's God. making something and then <laughs> you're like hey can i get food and they're like did they pay and they're like, yeah and then you slightly pay the cook and then the cook gives you the food and you know what i'm saying like yeah. it's this just like oh, decentralized wow. yeah, like, like s- anarchist yeah. restaurant yeah, like the, the servers are their own sort of contractors that exactly pay the cooks that's bananas well, yeah the, yeah the, the pay the, and then they they charge the customers yeah they like an in-between fee and they take a cut God, uh, that's that's crazy i love that so yeah, like getting a server, like getting somebody to attend you in the low wall is like a crapshoot. <laughs> like it, it's not it's not always clear if somebody's working there because yeah, it's not really clear if somebody's working anywhere when you're here, except for like really you know like the blue ports, like the really nice sections of it. Um, but like especially just all the like more quote unquote like provincial parts of the low wall, I feel like that's how it works. Um, and so you have to know like, oh yeah, you can't go to that part of the low wall. There's literally nobody that works there. And like, oh yeah, if you go at this time, oh, I think there's some people that serve, you know, you, you get what I'm saying? Like just a complete fucking crapshoot. 
I'd love uh, it. But, I'd love it if it's there's there's a sort of system uh, similar like in in New York where bartenders will hop around to different bars and they'll have like a crowd of people that like follow them. Like, hey, do you hear Vinny's working? Uh, Vinny's working at the the old the old drunken donkey or whatever. Um, they'll be like, oh yeah, we got we got to get served by Vinny. Uh, that sort of thing. Oh yes, they know. Like, oh yeah, we know that there's a cook over here, so we better go over there so the servers cook him. Yeah, or, like choose him. Yeah, yeah. I, I, yeah. I think there's a there's an art to the low wall of like knowing where people are set up and and where people work and what parts of the city have better parts of the low wall. Because in reality, yeah, it's like ninety different little restaurant cafe, something like, you know, no consistent menu. Just yeah, this just sort of sprawling anarchist uh, nourishment establishment. <laughs> the megalith food court. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, this is hell. Uh, but I think it's you know certain parts of it vibes. And I think, uh, luckily, this part in the works sort of got that hole-in-the-wall feel. A dingy little hole-in-the-wall bar. And, uh, yeah, Will, you're, you're taking your notes there. And, uh, yeah, Griff, I feel like you're able to, to find her. Yeah. Um, uh, I'm def- I wouldn't I wouldn't say I'm, like, familiar with the bar, but it, it's definitely, like, it's, it's a place I know. It's a place I'm familiar with. It's a place I'm, like, I've passed it before a few times. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, I don't feel out of place here is what I'm trying to get at. Um, so I'm not, yeah. I'm kind of, I'm, I'm a little more at ease than we've seen Griff before. Um, and I'm, I'm in my civvies and I just walk in. Hey. Oh, oh, hey there, Griff. Hey, uh, I, uh, I, I dropped off my letter to, uh, or your letter, I guess, um, to, oh. uh, Mr. Gunterzound and, uh, he, uh, he really liked it. He, he said he's, uh, he's going to offer you, uh, um, if you can. If you can get a story on his desk, then yeah, he'll he'll take it. Oh, oh, Griff, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. That's oh, that's just great. She gives him a hug. She's like, oh, now, oh, oh, that's so rude of me. I'm sorry. How have you been, other than you know, uh, delivering on that such kind promise you made me? Oh, um, I'm I'm okay. Uh, I uh, I I, I wanted to apologize for for getting kind of getting kind of weird yesterday after um, you know, all that. All that stuff happened. All, all the, all the rubble and whatnot. Oh, well, that's okay, Griff. You know, trauma makes us all act in funny ways. Yeah, I, uh, I gotta. Yeah, I. I feel like I should tell you something. Um. Oh. Uh. It's okay. I feel like I know Griff. Uh. You do. You know. Yeah. I've read some stories. You know, my fair share of books, and well. If you have a demon living in your brain that influences your decisions, I, I won't tell anybody, Griff. It could be our secret. This is much different than how Ratatouille went. <laughs> <laughs> this is nothing like I think, Ratatouille. <laughs> I mean, I, I think I'm having a, I'm, I'm definitely having a there's a tiny chef in my head moment. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, you... I have yes? a, I have a, uh, I have a little god. Oh. Um, that uh, well, that that tells me what to do. Um. Well, I mean, he doesn't tell. Like, I I have like volition and stuff. You know. Um. Like like I'm my own man. I'm a man. I'm a man. Um, okay. But he uh, he 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 like gives me advice and tells me like, you know, it sort of whispers in the wind. Um, oh. You're so- nailing it, Griff. You're nailing it. Yeah, so basically... Thank you. But basically, you have a little demon in your brain. I mean, that I wouldn't... That wasn't far off. That wasn't... I don't know. I feel like the connotation of demon's a little, you know... Well, like, you I, know, I wouldn't I, want to do that to him. In a new... Okay, maybe maybe demon has some bad connotations. I meant demon in a neutral way. Okay, okay. Anyway, I thank you. <laughs> yeah, of course. The, 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 the neutral connotation. <laughs> neutral like, demons. Hey, what's up, demon? <laughs> yeah... Uh, <laughs> anyway, thank you, Griff, for sh- for trusting me with this information. Uh, I just, I, you know, um, I I just I figured, you know, with what happened yesterday, it would it would probably happen again in the future, and I didn't want to, you know, I I didn't want you worrying or anything. Okay, so you have a you just have a, sm- a small god living in your brain, I guess. No, it's you know, guess. he's in um he's he's in my ropes. In your. And he takes out he takes out a little red cord and just starts like, um, sort of like slinging it around his finger. 
That's that's him. That's him right there. And Willow, I don't know if you would you would probably have some level of familiarity with. Um... Yeah, this is um, this is him. Um, this is this is Hitch. Okay. Well, uh, it is nice to meet you, Hitch. And she like all, like almost offers out her hand to the rope, and then like the the rope totally flops in her hand. Yeah. Hey. Uh, oh, absolutely. Like, oh, oh well. <laughs> oh well, my, I did this almost on impulse. I thought it was foolish for a moment, but you know, I, what a what a gentlemanly r- rope you are. That's you know, I believe you full heartedly now, Griff. This is oh, this is yeah. great. Oh yeah. What's he saying? Is he uh, saying is he, he nice uh, to meet uh, me too? I I I, I jerk the rope back. Should I shake uh, he, him? Um, he oh, said come it's on, man. come on. He said it's lovely to meet you, and you have oh. a lovely hand. What a gentleman! <laughs> oh, thank you, Mister Rope. I almost don't know how to let that bit stay. <laughs> <laughs> please, please. Oh God! Please, it's good. Uh, I no, I'd yeah. love it if uh, <laughs> I'd love it if Hitch is is just an absolute. Like, uh, uh, absolute just, pervert. Just a dis- disgusting, but, uh, horrible Okay, horrible. I'm, I'm putting you, I'm putting you back. Oh, what's he saying now? Is he saying how much he likes my coat or something? Uh, sure, yeah, loves, great coat, by the way. Loves oh, your coat. Thank You're definitely you. being a dick right now, Griff. Oh, okay, yeah, he's, he's tired now. He's, he's sleepy. <laughs> good, good night. Oh, how adorable. Oh, we'll tuck it out. <laughs> Nighty night, Mr. Ropey Man. <laughs> yeah, you just hear him muttering away. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's um that's that's really my whole thing. Um I uh I I realized that I kinda jumped into this I I don't think a whole lot about what I do. I just I kinda just go for it, you know, and I mean, I guess the better way to describe it is Hitch tells me to go for it. Um, oh. hmm. He kind of guides me. And I, I realized I kind of joined this organization without really knowing you or anyone else. Um, I don't know. I, I figured we could like, I, we, like we could, uh, you, you, we, um, and he's like, he's getting a little, he's getting a little flustered, a little, little red faced. We could like get to like know each other, like like you know like like here not like not like a date or anything. I'm not like you know like not I don't want to make it weird or anything, but like no, uh, Griff, do you know how to play Orbit? Uh, I'll teach you. Uh, n- no, 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 I don't. Well, come on, I'll teach you. It's time for you to start learning. Okay. There are a lot of skills you can use in orbit that you could also use in espionage. Ooh. You'll see, my friend. So, now we move over to the final member of our party. Sinet, how did you spend the rest of your evening, my friend? Um, I think after helping the few people that she could, Sinet waited right there. She didn't leave. She found some place to sit or some place to p- pace and just watched them work waiting waiting for pent to come out of that tower out of that yeah i think out of that yeah, little out of the, out bulb of the in the sky i think uh, the majority of the medical workers eventually move the people that are wounded that you help with which again not too many uh eventually over to uh like i said the university um including warren and i, I think you begin to see that uh, the last of the caterers and whatnot are being let out of the, the central nexus uh, you know, civilians, black guard, the black guard leave, and but yeah, you never see Pent. He just kind of stands there. I think before uh, the black guards leave, she's like, "Is is that everyone?" Seems like it, ma'am. Couldn't find anyone else. It's. Is there a possibility that somebody got left up there? Mm. Possibly. These things are huge. We searched all we could. If somebody didn't want to be found, they could certainly hide in there. Oh. And, oh. Okay. Thank you. Um. 
Do you need help, ma'am? Um, Can I help you home, or are you well? I'm fine. I'm fine. Um, you're free to go, sir. Thank you for um, helping me. Of course. Have a good evening, ma'am. Thank you. You too. And he makes his way. And I think Sinet kind of stands there for a little bit longer. And then when no one's left there, she she makes her way to that elevator. Uh, cool. Yeah, I, I think I think you absolutely can. Um, and yeah, I mean, Sinet can spend as much time as she wants up there, but uh, yeah, there's no one to be found. Um, I, I mean, she can spend the rest of the evening uh, if she wants to. I, I suppose that's probably her, her general demeanor. I think that's what she'll do, but she gets to mm-hmm. the end. I think she gets more and more, like, frantic as she goes. Like, I think there's just a point where she just kind of sits down and cries. No, yeah, there's absolutely a, a breakdown moment. Yeah, just sit there um, in this shattered dome of a place. Yeah. It's it's definitely not safe by any means. You can see, yeah, you can definitely hear the quiet cracking arc through the, the hallways and stuff here and there. Um, and yeah, you can definitely tell this is not a, a, a place to be hanging out. I think when she's, I think it's, I think by the time like the sun starts rising again, she makes her way out. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's the morning. Do you have anything, does she have anything to do that day before the evening? I, well, she's definitely going to go back to the perch to see if maybe made it back there. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like you probably know where, where he lives within the perch. I mean, you yeah, know, it's a small town. Yeah. Uh, equivalent. And, uh, um, yeah, so you see his mother uh, outside of their home. She's clearly, like, a, lashing some lines uh, from the building to uh, another building, which is attached to, like, a strut, you know, just sort of reinforcing stuff. Heavy grunts, you know, lashing leather pieces together. That sort of thing. Kind of sees you on the approach, gives you a curt little wave, and continues to, which is to it. Does she have a name? Uh, I have not given her one. Let's call Let's... her Penelope. Penelope? Yeah. Uh, Penelope? Oh! Oh! <sighs> How you doing, Zanette? Uh, hello there. On the court. Can I, uh... Can I help you? I was... I was hoping that you've seen Pent uh, any time at all since last night. Uh, of course, left this morning with his dumb little friends. <clears throat> and gets the gets the cord over a big hook. Whew, there we go. Oh, would you mind help me with this next one, Sinet? These are a bitch. Sinet just kind of pauses and breathes. <sighs> I would I very much love to, Pen- Penelope. Thank you, Sinet. Oh, I appreciate the help. Now, what's the worry now? And yeah, she kind of hooks it on one side of the of, of her home, kind of has a mallet in her in her apron, pulls it out and puts a stake and whaps it into the side of the of the building, d- d- driving it in. Yeah, and then yeah, pulls it and then kind of hold, holds out you know a part of the length with you. Yeah. Uh, to, to to you. Yeah. I I take I take it. Um, Sinet just kind of gives a sigh and says. <sighs> You know, just normal midwife duties. Nothing to fret over. Overthinking is what you were doing, wasn't it, Sinat? You could definitely say that. I recognize you worrying from a mile away, girl. Uh, you He's gotta like, relax, all right? Ben can take care of himself. He's a strong boy. A little, a little further, a little further. Yes. Uh, uh, I know. But, you know, worrying's just second nature to me nowadays. <sighs> well, it's, it's not good for you, Sinek. You do enough for us, all right? Take a moment. Breathe. Everything's okay. It's a beautiful day. She looks out on the skyline to perch, which, to me, I imagine, especially at this point, like, early morning, probably the most beautiful vista imaginable. Uh, glorious, destero morning. Yeah, Sinek kind of goes to one of the mini railings and just kind of leans out. You know, living here long enough, you kind of just don't really notice the couple hundred feet drop to <laughs> death just inches oh, yeah. away. But she just kind of leans over. I, yes, you're right. I, you know, just kind of get caught up in things sometimes. 
It just seems like every time I fix one thing, another problem comes up. Sometimes before the first one can even finish. <laughs> that's, that's life. That is certainly life, Sinner. But what matters is that there's something to solve those problems for, right? Penelope kind of comes over to you near the railing. She's probably like a stout woman, right? I feel like she's probably like a redhead. I, I see Pent as a redhead. I guess I haven't clarified that. Um, yeah, sort of like a, a hearty, not to be too stereotypical, but like a hearty Irish mom sort of build. Um, kind of comes up to the, the railing with you. Uh, you know, Sinet, sometimes I like to think uh, being this close to the edge all the time has its uses. Remind you of what you have to worry about falling, right? She whaps you on the back. I mean, if the gods have anything to say about it, I won't be falling any time soon. Yeah, no. You're a crafty one. So is Pent. So is everybody here. Worry about yourself a little bit more. Alright, Sinet? I... I just don't think it's in me. You'll find it. And it gives you another pat on the back. I got a couple more of these lashes to put up. Unless you want to be pulling leather all day, you might want to get back to your duties, huh? I've been gone for a little bit. I just wanted to... How is Scarlet doing? Still not good. I'd see her if you could. And uh, yet another thing to make me worry. <laughs> I'll be on my way. Uh, thank you for giving me some of your time, Maji. Thank you for yours, Mete. Thank you for joining us on this episode 6 of Swan Dive. We are riveted every single episode that comes out, and we are even more riveted for every individual that manages to make it this far. So thank you. And for listeners that joined us on our interview with Grant and Chris, thank you for sticking around. I really can't express how much I appreciate it. Next week, we're going to find ourselves in episode 7, something of an individual episode for our characters. But after episode 7, we are going to pursue something of an experimental format in a series of solo episodes dedicated to our characters' individual journeys within the Spire, both to find more of a sense of place within the Spire and to weave the web to make our overall journey a little bit more, shall we say, rich. I hope you can join us on the rest of this. That will be Swan Dive. Safe travels, my friends.